what do you say? Yes, it's that time again. It's Tech Tuesday. Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week, we are again looking at common monitoring issues and how you can use Mixing Station uh, to help correct those. Um, so let's hop right into it. In this week's example, uh, similar to last week, we've got three vocalists that are all maxed out in their in-ears. And last week, we determined that the issue was a gain issue, and we used Regain in Mixing Station to fix that. Well, this week we're gonna say, well, okay, let's assume that the gain is not the issue. It's more of how they actually set their levels in their ears that we need to look at. Um, now, really, really quick recap, and I'll put a link to this at the end of the video. Um, I've done a video in the past where I show musicians how I suggest that they set their levels in their ears. And basically, if you're a bass player, I would have you set yourself at negative five turn your body pack up to where it feels really good in your ears, and then mix in all your other levels. By the time you've done all that, uh, you may find that you need a little bit more bass because now it's kind of hidden beneath everything else. We still have 5 dB to boost up that uh, bass in your ears before you're even hitting um, into anything above Unity, basically. Um, and that works really, really well for me and for the musicians I've taught how to do that. Um, so in today's example, if we look in here, if we look at Vox One ears, you can see that Vox One is already maxed out. A lot of musicians do this. It's uh, just from lack of training, basically. The first thing they'll do is they'll throw themselves all the way at full. They'll start mixing in other things. The next thing you know, they can't hear themselves. Uh, and the key is to create a contrast between what they need to hear and everything else. So um, we're gonna look at IDCAs and how you can use those to fix this for their specific mix. So if you're not familiar with DCAs, again, I'll post a video uh, or a link at the end of this video. Um, a DCA is a fader that controls a bunch of other faders and usually it's specific to the main left-right mix. So for example, the XR18, which is what we're looking at here today, um, that will only, there's only four DCAs and they'll only work for the main mix. An IDCA is specific to mixing station and actually specific to your instance of your app that you have open. Um, it's a virtual DCA. It can work for the same ways as a regular DCA does, but you can have target mixes. So it can be specific to someone's in your mix or the main left, right mix or your recording mix, whatever it is it needs to be. Um, so it can do some things that a regular DCA cannot. This is gonna help us in this instance. So on my particular layout, I have a blank layout uh, at the top, blank layer, excuse me. Um, this is my uh, butt dial proof layer, but you can do this on any of the layers. Um, we're gonna click and hold. We're gonna select Vox one, two, and three, um, and you'll see why in a moment here. We're gonna then hit the plus button to add in an IDCA, and we are going to select every single channel in the inputs, the aux input, and the effects returns. Those are all the things that the musicians can have in their ears on an XR18. And if you notice at the very top, we can name this, I'm just gonna call it IDCA for right now, uh, we can go to color, black inverted, but the important thing is target mix is set to any. That's what we want in this particular example. Okay, and we can back out, back out again. And now you'll notice we have our Vox 1, 2, and 3, um, and then our IDCA, which says negative 10.6. Because I don't have any uh, sins on fader happening right now, the IDCA, because it's set to any, is showing me the... Um, average volume of all those faders we just selected for the main left-right mix. Now, first off, IDCAs uh, can be dangerous because um, there's basically math that's making this happen and sometimes the math can get a little bit hairy. So first thing I would do if I was on an actual console right now would be to save my scene before doing this just in case you mess anything up. It's always a good safety net. But also, when you use your IDCAs, going downward like we're about to do today is generally gonna be pretty safe. 
be careful going upwards. It's usually going to be okay, but there's more room for things to go wrong when you go up than when you go down. So just a safety note, go ahead and save your scene. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to hop into Vox One's ears. We're going to hit Sins on Fader. And you see Vox One is at plus 10. It's all the way up in the Vox One ear mix. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down the IDCA while watching the one Vox fader, and I'm going to try to get it to about negative five. Now, obviously, you want to tell your uh, vocalist that you're doing this before you start doing it. Ask them to turn their body pack up while you're turning their mix down. Um, and now what I can do is simply take that one Vox fader and push it up to about unity. And now what we've done is we've created a 5 dB contrast that did not previously exist between that particular uh, fader and everything else in that person's in-ear mix. Uh, if they need more contrast, we can keep doing what we're doing, or we still have another 10 dB if we have to go above Unity. Now, I usually try not to have a bunch of faders above Unity. Um, if you need to do that, there might be a gain issue that you need to look at, but that should get them started um, and work really well. So let's hop on now to Vox 2. We're gonna do the same thing. While watching the two Vox fader, I'm gonna pull down the IDCA. It's about negative five. Okay, there we go, close enough. And then we'll push up two Vox to about unity. And now again, we've created about a five dB difference between their microphone and everything else in their ears. We'll do the same thing for Vox 3. Pull down to that fader is about negative five, push them up, and boom, we're done. Now, again, because IDCAs can be dangerous, especially when you're not in sense on fader mode, they're now affecting your main mix. What I would do is once you get everybody sorted, this is not something you should have to do all the time, it's just when there are people that have any problems or maybe a new person on the team, once you're done, I would click back on your layer, hit the little refresh button at the top right hand button, and clear all that out so you can't accidentally mess anything up later on. And that's it. We just use IDCAs uh, as a means of controlling all the levels in a selected mix. And then we created a contrast between what the person needs to hear and everything else. And that should get them off on the right foot. I hope this has been helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, have a great week. Again, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. I hope this has been helpful for you and your team. Come back here every Tuesday for new information.